Welcome to this collaborative DME on Demand presentation for spinal orthoses. This presentation is hosted by A, B, and DME administrative contractors. The information given in this training is correct as of November 2019. The most current information related to this topic can be found at the links on the resources slide near the end of this presentation. The participants are CGS Administrators, LLC, First Coast Service Options, Incorporated, National Government Services, Neridian Healthcare Solutions, LLC, Novitas Solutions, Palmetto GBA, and WPS Government Health Administrators. The agenda for this presentation includes definitions, coverage criteria of spinal orthoses, documentation requirements, references, and resources. Now we will discuss definitions. For prefabricated orthoses, there is no physical difference between orthoses coded as custom fitted versus those coded as off the shelf. The differentiating factor for proper coding is the need for minimal self-adjustment at the time of fitting by the beneficiary, caretaker for the beneficiary, or supplier. This minimal self-adjustment does not require the services of a certified orthotist or an individual who has specialized training. Items requiring minimal self-adjustment are coded as off-the-shelf orthoses. For example, adjustment of straps and closures, bending or trimming for final fit or comfort, not all inclusive, fall into this category. Items requiring more than minimal self-adjustment by a qualified practitioner are coded as custom fitted. Documentation must be sufficiently detailed to include, but is not limited to, a detailed description of the modifications necessary at the time of fitting the orthosis to the beneficiary. This information must be available upon request. Classification as custom fitted requires more than minimal self-adjustment at the time of delivery in order to provide an individualized fit. For example, the item must be trimmed, bent, molded with or without heat, or otherwise modified resulting in alterations beyond minimal self-adjustment. This fitting at delivery does require expertise of a certified orthotist or an individual who has specialized training in the provision of orthosis to fit the item to the individual beneficiary. More than minimal self-adjustment is defined as changes made to achieve an individualized fit of the item that requires the expertise of a certified orthotist or an individual who has equivalent specialized training in the provision of orthotics such as a physician, treating practitioner, an occupational therapist or physical therapist in compliance with all applicable federal and state licensure and regulatory requirements. A certified orthotist is defined as an individual who is certified by the American Board for Certification in Orthotics and Prosthetics Incorporated or by the Board for Orthotist Prosthetist Certification. A custom fabricated spinal orthosis is one which is individually made for a specific beneficiary. No other beneficiary would be able to use this orthosis. Starting with basic materials including, but not limited to, plastic, metal, leather, or cloth in the form of sheets, bars, etc. It involves substantial work such as vacuum forming, cutting, bending, molding, sewing, etc. It requires more than trimming, bending, or making other modifications to a prefabricated item. A molded to beneficiary model orthosis is a particular type of custom fabricated orthosis in which either an impression of the specific body part is made, usually by means of a plaster or fiberglass cast, and this impression is then used to make a positive model, usually of plaster, of the body part. Or detailed measurements are taken of the beneficiary's torso and are used to modify a positive model, which has been selected from a large library of models to make it conform to the beneficiary's body shape and dimensions. Or a digital image of the beneficiary's torso is made using computer CAD CAM software which then directs the carving of a positive model. The orthosis is then individually fabricated and molded over the positive model of the beneficiary. Next, let's discuss coverage criteria. 
a spinal orthosis, L0450 through L0651, is covered when it is ordered for one of the following indications. To reduce pain by restricting mobility of the trunk, or to facilitate healing following an injury to the spine or related soft tissues, or to facilitate healing following a surgical procedure on the spine or related soft tissue, or to otherwise support weak spinal muscles and or a deformed spine. If the coverage criteria are not met, the item will be denied as not medically necessary. For items where the HCPCS code specifies elastic or other similar terminology for stretchable material, use the code that is most applicable to the item. A NOC, not otherwise classified, or a miscellaneous HCPCS code must not be used instead of the specific code. Refer to the long code narrative and any relevant coding guideline for the criteria applicable for each HCPCS code. Items that are primarily constructed of elastic or other stretchable materials, for example, support items made of materials such as neoprene or spandex, elastane, lycra, that contain stays and or panels, must be coded as A4467. Items that are primarily constructed of an elastic material, for example, canvas, cotton, or nylon, that are incapable of providing the necessary immobilization or support to the body part for which it is designed, and that have stays and or panels capable of providing the required immobilization or support to the body part for which it is designed must be coded using A4467. Items that are not capable of providing the necessary immobilization or support to the body part for which it is designed, regardless of materials, must be coded using A9270, which is a non-covered item or service. Payment for a spinal orthosis is included in the payment to a hospital or SNF if the orthosis is provided to a beneficiary prior to an inpatient hospital admission or Part A covered SNF stay, and the medical necessity for the orthosis begins during the hospital or SNF stay, for example, after spinal surgery. A claim should not be submitted to the DME MAC in this situation. Or, payment for a spinal orthosis is also included in the payment to a hospital or a Part A covered SNF stay if the orthosis is provided to a beneficiary during an inpatient hospital or Part A covered SNF stay prior to the day of discharge and the beneficiary uses the item for medically necessary inpatient treatment or rehabilitation. A claim must not be submitted to the DME MAC in this situation. Payment for a spinal orthosis delivered to a beneficiary in a hospital or a Part A covered SNF stay is eligible for coverage by the DME MAC if the orthosis is medically necessary for a beneficiary after discharge from a hospital or Part A covered SNF stay and the orthosis is provided to the beneficiary within two days prior to discharge to home and the orthosis is not needed for inpatient treatment or rehabilitation but is left in the room for the beneficiary to take home. The date of service on the claim is the discharge date. Next, we will discuss Comprehensive Error Rate Testing, or CERT. In an additional effort to continue the reduction in the CERT error rate, please note that medical review MR nurses may be contacting individual suppliers regarding CERT errors in an effort to assist in resolution and prevention of future occurrences. There was a great decrease from 44.6% in 2017 to 35.5% in 2018. The information found during this CERT review includes the denial reasons found on this slide. Denial reason number one is missing or inadequate documentation to support clinical disease management for durable medical equipment. For any item to be covered by Medicare, it must be reasonable and necessary for the diagnosis or treatment of illness or injury or to improve the functioning of a malformed body member. The second is an incomplete or invalid order. The order should be detailed and must include all items, options, or additional features that are separately billed or require an upgraded code. The description can be either a narrative description, a HCPCS code, a HCPCS code narrative, or a brand name and model. Third is missing signature required by Medicare policy. Suppliers should check the claim before submitting to make sure everything that is requested is complete, including signatures. Denial reason number four is missing or inadequate proof of delivery. 
The proof of delivery must be signed every time suppliers deliver an item to prove the beneficiary actually received it. The fifth reason is the date of delivery is not supported by the submitted documentation. The date of delivery reported on the claim must match the signature date of the beneficiary or the beneficiary's designee. Lastly, number six is when beneficiary was in a Medicare Part A inpatient or SNF stay on the billed date of service. Those items the beneficiary needs while in a Part A covered stay prior to discharge would not be billed to the DME MAC. The Part A covered inpatient stay refers to those beneficiaries in a hospital, skilled nursing facility, as well as a nursing facility that provides skilled services. Now we will talk about documentation requirements. For spinal orthoses, suppliers must have a dispensing order from the treating physician prior to delivery of the item if they will be delivering prior to obtaining a detailed written order, a DWO. The dispensing order may be written, faxed, or verbal order. The dispensing order must include the elements listed on this slide, and suppliers must retain documentation of the order, which is separate from the detailed written order. For the date of the order, use the date the supplier is contacted by the physician or practitioner for verbal orders, or the date entered by the physician or practitioner for written dispensing orders. For the signature requirement, if it is a verbal order, the person in the supplier's office taking the verbal order should sign and date the dispensing order. For a written dispensing order, the treating physician or practitioner should sign and date the order prior to sending it to the supplier. The supplier must have a detailed written order prior to submitting a claim. If a signed detailed written order isn't in the supplier's records before a claim is submitted to Medicare, it will be denied as not reasonable and necessary. The detailed written order must include the following elements. Beneficiary's name, date of the order, a description of all items, options, accessories, or additional features that are separately billed or require an upgraded code. The description can be either a general description, spinal orthosis, a HICPICS code, a HICPICS code narrative, or a brand name and model number. Prescribing physician or practitioner signature and date if applicable. Someone other than the physician or practitioner may complete the detailed written order. However, the prescribing physician or practitioner must review the content and sign and date the document. If a custom fabricated orthosis is ordered, this must be clearly indicated on the written order. When providing these items, suppliers must provide the product that is specified by the prescribing practitioner. Be sure that the prescribing practitioner's medical record justifies the need for the type of product, for example, prefabricated versus custom fabricated. Only bill for the HICPICS code that accurately reflects both the type of orthosis and the appropriate level of fitting. Have detailed documentation in suppliers' records that justify the code selected. For custom fabricated orthoses, there must be detailed documentation in the treating practitioner's records to support the medical necessity of custom fabricated rather than a prefabricated orthosis as described in the coverage indications, limitations, and or medical necessity section of the related LCD. This information will be corroborated by the functional evaluation in the orthotist or prosthetist records. This information must be available upon request. For spinal orthosis to be covered by Medicare, the patient's medical record must contain sufficient documentation of the patient's medical condition to substantiate the necessity for the type and quantity of items ordered. There must be information in the patient's medical record that supports the medical necessity for the item and the diagnosis code that is billed on the claim. Supplier produced records, even if signed by the prescribing physician or practitioner, and attestation letters, for example, letters of medical necessity, are deemed not to be part of a medical record for Medicare payment purposes. Records from suppliers or healthcare professionals with a financial interest in the claim outcome are not considered sufficient by themselves for determining that an item is reasonable and necessary. Templates and forms are subject to cooperation with information in the medical record. A prescription is not considered to be part of the medical record. Medical information intended to demonstrate compliance with coverage criteria may be included on the prescription but must be cooperated by information contained in the medical record. 
For custom fitted orthoses, documentation must be sufficiently detailed to include but is not limited to a detailed description of the modifications necessary at the time of fitting the orthosis to the beneficiary. For custom fabricated orthoses, there must be detailed documentation in the treating practitioner's records to support the medical necessity of custom fabricated rather than a prefabricated orthosis, as described in the coverage indications limitations and or medical necessity section of the related LCD. This information will be corroborated by the functional evaluation in the orthotist or prosthetist records. This information must be available upon request. Non-consumable supplies are described as supply items that are more durable in nature, but may require periodic replacement. For example, soft interfaces identify as non-consumable or durable and not requiring routine scheduled replacement. The supplier should assess whether the supply item remains functional. For purposes of this requirement, non-functional means that the item is no longer able to be used safely or effectively for the purpose for which it was intended. There are numerous reasons that would render durable supplies non-functional. Breakage, wear, or contamination are some common examples. When the item becomes unusable for reasons such as damage, wear, soiling, or contamination that is unable to be removed with recommended cleaning, etc., the item can be considered as non-functional and may be replaced. The supplier should document the condition of the item being replaced in sufficient detail to indicate why the replacement is necessary at that time and document the reasons the item is no longer functional. Next, we will talk about some resources and reminders. Beneficiaries that have Medicare questions can be directed to 1-800-MEDICARE, Social Security Administration, and the Benefits Coordination Recovery Center. Noridian Healthcare Solutions Jurisdiction A resources include website, IVR, supplier contact center, and telephone reopenings, Noridian Medicare Portal, and LCD and Policy Articles contact information. CGS Administrators, LLC, Jurisdiction B resources include website, IVR unit, My CGS Web Portal, customer service, telephone reopenings, and LCDs and Policy Article contact information. CGS Administrators LLC Jurisdiction C resources include website, IVR unit, My CGS web portal, customer service, telephone reopenings, and LCD and policy article contact information. Noridian Healthcare Solutions Jurisdiction D resources include website, IVR, supplier contact center and telephone reopenings, Noridian Medicare portal, and LCD and policy articles contact information. Other contractor resources include Pricing Data Analysis and Coding Contractor, PDAC, National Supplier Clearinghouse, and CEDI's contact information. We encourage you to visit the Medicare Learning Network. MLN is the place for official CMS Medicare fee-for-service provider educational information. MLN National Provider Education Articles help suppliers understand new or changed Medicare policy and how those changes affect them. A full array of other educational products, including web-based training courses and hard copy and downloadable publications, are also available. Thank you for taking the time to listen to our tutorial. Continue your learning experience by referring to additional recordings available on the Noridian website or YouTube channel.